exactly the way you want it. So if you're wondering what that was about, that was my friend Anson, and he's got an E93 M3, and today he's letting me drive it around and give my impressions on it, and so far, it is wonderful. I'm Anson Gunn, I drive a 2008 BMW M3. So I bought this car back in April of 2012, um, and so that means I've had it for almost coming up on five years now. My older brother actually owned an E46 M3 back in the day. There was something about it that just made it feel like a very refined sports car, but it wasn't crazy enough, it wasn't aggressive enough. It, it, it almost felt a little too tame. And then come this E9X generation M3s, these things are monsters when they first came out. It was, it was a V8 engine pushing again 412 horsepower from stock. And, and when I first drove this, when I test drove it years ago, I realized that the smoothness of the naturally aspirated engine, just the sheer throttle response, and no one will ever forget the 8400 RPM, uh, which is a classic, classic signature of the S65 engine. So M enthusiasts are very particular about their cars. And anytime a new generation comes out, there's something that changes and, and something that's a little bit unsettling. You know, when the E46 came out, it was a lot more digital than it had been in the past. And with this generation, it's no different. So this generation was the first to break out of the mold of the inline six engines in the M series. And this one had the naturally aspirated V8, but it made a ton of power, 412 horsepower right out of the factory. So this M3, the E93 M3, is a convertible. Uh, and Anson wanted the convertible because he wanted to hear that sound and he wanted to just be out in there in the elements. And I cannot blame him because the sound is just incredible. I mean, if any M3 to get as a convertible, it would be this one. Fellow M3 enthusiasts, they come up to me on the ass and they talk, well, listen, Anson, the convertible you're aware adds over 400 pounds to the vehicle. And I look at them and I say, okay, fine. But if the intent of purchasing the car was going to be a track car, uh, then I respect the decision for E92 owners to be buying the carbon fiber roof, the DCT transmission, and everything, you're maximizing everything for track use only, right? I respect that, and I think there's a time and place for that. But I think for me personally, it's really just this combination of the driving experience, the oral experience, the, this visceral feel of handling the vehicle, shifting through the gears, feeling the wind in your face, and most importantly, hearing the engine, the induction noise up front, and what comes out back, the exhaust noise. So if you've been watching the channel at all, we drove an F80 M3 recently. And so now we have the opportunity to drive the predecessor to that. The F80 M3 has a lot more assist. Auto rev matching is a lot of fun. It makes you feel invincible when you're driving around. 
This car is a lot more natural and grassroots, but the benefit to this car for me is the sound. The sound trumps the F80 every day of the week. journalists refer to this car as the best car all around. It's the best car on the track and the best car daily driving it. And this is a true test of that, really. Uh, I wouldn't call it the best at driving around town. It definitely is a little bit more aggressive than, say, my Forester or something. But it's uh, not a compromise in any sense of the word. It, it's not a compromise daily driving around. It's not a compromise performance-wise either. I'm originally a New Yorker. I was born and raised in New York. Uh, and so I bought this car when I was still in New York. And back then, you know, I worked in Midtown Manhattan. I took public transportation to work. Uh, there is no need for me to be driving this car on a daily basis. But now that I've moved down here to Virginia, I realized very quickly what those journalists meant when they mentioned that this is actually a practical daily driving track car. I've got the stock suspension on here, the stock brakes, and now that I drive this every day to work, the driving experience going through the, the occasional bumps around the DC area, it's pretty tolerable. You know, occasionally you'll, you'll hear the infamous M3 manual gearbox clunk. And, and when I first bought this car, the clunks I heard uh, really, really bothered me, but over the years I got used to it, and I realized it was actually kind of a commonplace thing for the for this generation M3 and the, and the manual transmission. You know, most purist BMW fans of the E46 will look at the E9X generation and say, it's, it's not a straight six. You, you've not got that refined response uh, from, from that engine of that era. And then E9X generation owners will look at the, the, the next generation, the FMs, and will say, why did they put a turbo on an M? You, you don't put a turbo on an M. And then I'm sure the next generation after the F is gonna be a hybrid M. Look at the i8. So if I owned this car, I would go to jail. There's no question, because the sound that this thing makes just makes me want to punch it every time. I mean, this car needs to be slower so that I can just listen to that sound. And to be honest, if I were to do an E90X generation M3, I would have to have a convertible with the manual with an aftermarket exhaust. And Anson has hit on all three of those points because it is just a raw experience to be able to drive around and listen to that sound. I got into cars as early as I can remember, really. I, I could have been like maybe eight, nine years old. My father had a red Cadillac. And I remember just him taking care of the thing, washing it, just making it bright and shiny. And I remember thinking back to myself, I was, I was eight years old, and, and I was like, that's cool. That's, that's a machine that not only takes people from point A to point B, but it's, it's an experience. Owning the vehicle, taking care of it, and now I realize driving it as I got older, that just this harmony of owning this machine that can give you so many different experiences simultaneously, I think really sums up what a true car enthusiast is all about. All of these cars are meant to do one thing, and that is, in my opinion, to bring out the passion of experiencing, owning, and living the car life. <laughs>